For 22 years, The Undertaker's undefeated streak had been a bona fide guarantee at WrestleMania. The realm of professional wrestling is so unpredictable that anything can happen, but if there was one thing that you could bet on every single year that you knew was going to happen, it was The Undertaker emerging victorious at WrestleMania. Now, his matches in recent years have had those one or two moments within them that you think that his opponent might actually win. Like at WrestleMania 25, when Shawn Michaels hit his super kick, his sweet gym music, you thought for just a second that he thought that you thought he was going to come out victorious. The same thing the next year when he almost retired, or when he eventually did retire. At 28, in the Hell in a Cell match between Triple H and The Undertaker, there was one point in the matchup where D-Generation X collectively hit their pedigree, hit their sweet chin music finishers at the same time simultaneously, or followed one another up. And then you thought for just a second they were going to screw over The Undertaker and end the undefeated streak at WrestleMania. It didn't happen. Now, all of those matches I just mentioned, I was looking forward to for every single one of them. I've been a fan since April of 2008. I think I've said that in every single video here on the channel I've ever done. But um, his matches with Shawn Michaels, his matches with Triple H, his match with uh, Edge at WrestleMania 24... All those matches I very much look forward to because they were all great matches, even his match with CM Punk at WrestleMania 29 last year. However, his matchup with Brock Lesnar was a bit different, if only because it's a matchup we've seen before. And although it was a great matchup in 2003, it just wasn't going to be the same all these years later. Not 2003, I'm sorry, 2002. So 12 years later, these two were going to mix it up at WrestleMania 30. I was just disappointed that Undertaker wouldn't be facing John Cena this year. That's a dream match I've been wanting to see for a very long time now. Of course, when that didn't come to fruition, I took what we had. We had Brock Lesnar versus The Undertaker. If their past matches had been any indication, these two could go together. So I was looking forward to the feud. Uh, the feud itself was a bit of a disappointment going into WrestleMania. Undertaker and Lesnar were rarely on Raw. When they were on Raw, they never really did anything of note. Brock Lesnar um, never really got one over The Undertaker at any point until the uh, final episode of Raw right before WrestleMania. So that being said, I'm watching WrestleMania 30 right at my house, or my, not at my house, I'm sorry, at my dorm at, at my college. I have a few people come over every, you know, once in a while to stop in during the matches. Kid down the hall comes in. Um, used to be a wrestling fan, used to watch all the time with his dad, he said. He was not watching WrestleMania on the network, he didn't own it or anything. But since I was watching it, he knew I was watching it, so he stopped by my dorm to watch it along with me. And of course, the one match that he stopped by to watch, not intentionally, he was just you know kind of walking by, saw the match on, and stayed for it, was The Undertaker versus Brock Lesnar. Now, he didn't really make any comment about the match quality, I just kind of felt embarrassed to be sitting there watching this match with him, thinking that... If he had, if this is a fan that hadn't been watching in years, and this was his first match in four or five years of being a wrestling fan since he last watched the product, then I feel embarrassed because this is a shitty ass matchup. It was very boring. They hit a few finishers here and there. It wasn't a complete, uh, a disaster of a matchup, but it was not at all what a lot of people were expecting, myself included. So that was one thing. Okay. So Brock Lesnar hits his two F5s. He goes up for the third F5. I'm thinking, okay, is Undertaker going to reverse this? Is he going to kick out again? I don't know if you have him kick out of three F5s. I don't know if he, who would ever do that. But he hits the third F5. And I'm thinking, okay. And then he gets the three count, and I just stay stunned. I didn't talk. I didn't speak. Uh, the kid that stopped by to me did not speak. He, not, he The guy who stopped by my dorm did not say anything for about... A solid 10 or 15 seconds because I was trying to take it all in. I think it was on Twitter or something. And I looked up and I'm thinking, the match is over. Holy shit. It's over. And then Michael Cole, the infamous words, whether you like him or you hate him. Um, I wouldn't call this the best call of his career. I mean, I know some people were thinking that Jim Ross had been going crazy on commentary, which could have been awesome. But the tone of the moment was that everyone was stunned. You couldn't really... Everyone was speechless, pretty much. And then you hear the un you hear Michael Cole say on commentary, the streak is over. And that was it. Undertaker laid there motionless. Brock Lesnar sitting up in the corner with a shocked look on his face. Paul Heyman coming into the ring and having that priceless facial expression on his face as well. Um, they get the clips of all the fans in the crowd, that one shocked Undertaker guy. All that kind of stuff. You know, that infamous meme of that guy. Meme of that guy. Um, just what a moment. And I watched it at that moment. I watched it at WrestleMania. I don't think I had watched it back since then until just recently. I might have watched it back the next day. Um, but it wasn't until just recently that I watched that moment back. And I actually wrote a Facebook post this on my Facebook page a couple of weeks ago on the five emotions that you knew you went through when this all happened. 
um, the sense of denial, the sense of shock, of anger, sadness, and appreciation for The Undertaker's career when all of this went down, when this is all occurring within only a few minutes. Now, like I said, a, a, one of those emotions when The Undertaker's streak was broken was anger. So for me, and I went through all five of these emotions, so when I wrote that Facebook post, I was speaking through personal experience. Um, but one of those things was, like, why the fuck would you end The Undertaker's 22-0 and streak, or I'm sorry, 21-0 and streak at WrestleMania? Now he's 21-1. and um, But even still, though, why would you end that? I was of the belief, and everyone, this is one of the most controversial things that happened in wrestling in a very long, long time, in that... Everyone had a differing opinion. It seems like all these months later, still people had that 50-50 opinion of whether it should have ended, um, whether it should not have ended, or what the belief was. My personal opinion was that the streak should have never ended. All these months later, I still believe that to this day, that I would have been completely content with The Undertaker retiring at 22-0, 23-0, whatever. I don't know if he would have gone 25-0. I don't know if he could have you know, last another three years, especially if this... Um, if his match with Brock Lesnar was any indication of, of how he's doing these days. But with that being said, though, I still believe that the streak should not have been broken. But there's nothing that you could do about it now. It's happened. You can't go back on it. The streak has been broken at the hands of Brock Lesnar. Now, that was another complaint that he's a part-timer, and I was also complaining about this, I believe, right after WrestleMania. It was the end of an era. They kicked off another era that same night with Daniel Bryan winning the WWE World Heavyweight Championship in the main event of the show. So with that being said... Does Brock Lesnar beating the streak benefit him all these months later? Now, that's what this video is going to be all about. So, is the fact that he's a part-timer really affect the fact that he ended the streak? Now, at the time, I disagreed with the decision to have Brock Lesnar be that guy because he didn't really benefit he didn't really benefit from it at the time considering he's a former WWE champion. He'd already done so much in his career. He's a bona fide Hall of Famer, in my opinion, anyway. He's already done so much within the course of his career that I think that um, he never really needed that rub to begin with. I was of the mindset that if anyone was going to end it, it could have been a Roman Reigns, a Bray Wyatt, a younger guy perhaps, not a guy that is already established. Now, with that being said and the fact that he's a part-timer and whatever, the thing with Brock Lesnar and why I'm okay all these months later with him being the one to break the streak and not any other part-timer or any other superstar in general was that, let's say that Bray Wyatt broke the streak, okay? So Bray Wyatt ends the streak, and, you know, months later, I mean, it, the thing with Bray Wyatt or any other active competitor on the main roster was that if they ended the streak, they'd be there every single day on, on, the, on the WWE roster, on WWE TV, and maybe that's the point. But with them being on TV all the time, there was a bigger risk of them losing that rub that much quicker because you could have lost a match to John Cena at the following pay-per-view. He could have challenged Daniel Bryan for the WWE World WWE title at Extreme Rules and lost. Well, that, well that, what happens to the rub then? You know what I mean? There's a bigger chance of him, uh, of the push of Bray Wyatt or whoever could have ended the streak being ruined because he's on TV all the time. Much like with The Miz, the guy won the main event of WrestleMania 27 Yet, he loses the WWE title a month later. Now, what does that accomplishment mean three or four years later? It means absolutely nothing. He can brag about it all he wants, and he has that. He has that. He can say that he won the main event of WrestleMania 27 against John Cena. But even so, what does it really mean all these years later? Brock Lesnar, a guy that only appeared the night after WrestleMania and showed up a few times after that to promote his match with John Cena at SummerSlam for the WWE World Heavyweight title... There's a much less chance of him being ruined unless he was to lose at John Cena at SummerSlam. But because he only shows up once in a while, he maintains that mystique about his character. Now, this isn't necessarily about the streak, but more about part-timers in general. But it really irks me when people get annoyed, um, you know, not to sound like a, you know, ironic there, but it really annoys me when people say that the Rock, even though he said he'll never go away, that he'll be, you know, around all the time, that Brock Lesnar should be doing more dates, and he should be on every Raw just because he's champion. Um, I'm trying to think of other part-timers that come back. Batista, I know him and Jericho, you know, kind of work every Raw and SmackDown. Um, but even with guys like Batista and Jericho, who still do more dates than Lesnar and The Rock, the thing with those guys is that if they're on every single fucking Raw, if they're on every single fucking episode of Friday Night SmackDown, how special do they really? How, how special are they to the WWE? 
The only reason we get excited about those guys coming back is because we don't see them too often. And if they were to wrestle on every Raw, to appear on every Raw, to wrestle on every pay-per-view, the buy rates wouldn't go up, or the subscription, the scrub, uh, subscriber count for the WWE Network, however they you know, uh, tally that up nowadays, I have no idea. Probably by the subscribers, since pay-per-view business is pretty much dead with the new, ne- with the new WWE Network. So with that being said, the mystique around the part-timers is essentially gone if you have them around all the time. That's why people are so excited to see them wrestle whoever, whether it be John Cena, CM Punk, or whoever, because they don't show up often. That's why the best thing to do with Brock Lesnar is to have him work less dates. And that's why he works so few dates, because he means more when he eventually comes around. That's why I love Brock Lesnar, that's why I love The Rock, and they do the be- they, they are best for business, not to sound like the authority of Triple H here, but they are best for business. They sell merch, they you know bring in pay-per-views, they, they bring in pay-per-view buys, subscribers, whatever. They bring in new fans, they attract new eyes to the product. Those are the guys that Brock Lesnar and The Rock attract to WWE because they aren't around all that much. So that's my defense in the part-timers. But the thing with Brock Lesnar ending the streak was that he's a guy that could legitimately see, that you could legitimately see defeating The Undertaker. Now, The Undertaker, being almost 50 years old and being as worn out as he is, there was really no chance in hell. And I really don't know how a lot of people miss this going into WrestleMania, myself included. I don't know why I never thought about this you know, beforehand, in that um, Brock Lesnar is a guy that, had he lost to The Undertaker at WrestleMania, a 50-year-old guy that hasn't been in his prime in years, then it would have killed any credibility that Brock Lesnar had, especially all the wins that he had garnered up to that point over the likes of Triple H, CM Punk, and Big Show. I thought he won all of those matches just to be considered a threat to the streak and then lose to the streak at WrestleMania. I don't know what good that could have done, I don't know what else you really could have done with Brock Lesnar had he lost at WrestleMania. Um, I know he was clamoring for a championship match against John Cena or against whoever, against Daniel Bryan. But the thing is, had he lost at WrestleMania, he would have not been a threat at all. Maybe not at all, but he definitely would have been a threat, um, a lot less of a threat to The Undertaker's undefeated streak at WrestleMania had he, uh, at wherever. Um, he would have been a less of a threat to the championship, I'm sorry, had he lost at WrestleMania to The Undertaker. So the thing is with uh, with with the Undertaker and Brock Lesnar and the and the streak and all that kind of stuff, is the fact that Brock Lesnar all these months later. I think the final it all comes down to this. The bottom line is this: was it the right move to have Brock Lesnar and the streak after SummerSlam? I would say yes. I think it worked out for the better. I don't know if it gives you that big of a rub to end the streak or to beat the guy who beat the streak in Brock Lesnar. And I mean, if it was a Bray Wyatt then a John Cena could have beat Bray Wyatt. Someone could have beat John Cena. It could go on forever because they're regular performers. At least with Brock Lesnar, if Roman Reigns say, I don't know, I know a lot of people aren't enthralled by that idea to have Roman Reigns be the one to beat Brock Lesnar or to conquer Brock Lesnar for the WWE World WWE title next year. I know a lot of people aren't high on that idea, but the thing is, is that if someone defeats Brock Lesnar for that championship next year, there's a very high chance that Brock Lesnar will not be seen in WWE after that. Because his contract is reportedly set to expire right after WrestleMania next year. Whether they sign him to more dates, I have no idea. Especially with all the ongoing budget cuts. I don't know if they want to sign another guy to a $5 million deal. But with that being said, though, I would obviously not be opposed to Brock Lesnar sticking around. He has great matches. The character itself has been built up so monstrously over the last couple of months. And that's why I make this video now, Um, because after I said, uh, after the streak ended, I I said uh, multiple times that we really have to wait until months down the line to say if the streak ending was really a good idea or not. And I think after watching SummerSlam, it was. And I mean, maybe even that was too soon to say. I mean, I mean, I think by this point in time, we can definitively say that the streak ending worked out for the better in favor of Brock Lesnar winning. But the thing with that is, is that Brock Lesnar could always drop the championship night of champions. If they're going to do what I think they'll do and have him hold the championship until WrestleMania, which is the best course of action, then that's what you got to do with Brock Lesnar. I don't really see why he should lose any time before then. Would him ending the streak, if he was to lose the night of champions, would him ending the streak be considered a waste? Not as big of a waste, because had he lost to John Cena, then it would have been a waste. But um, I think had he ended the streak, he got to go all the way. And something that a lot of people just don't realize is that the streak is over. There's really nothing you can do about it now. Now you just got to run with it. 
like I've said before, I wasn't a fan of the streak ending. If I was booking, I would not have had to end. But now that it's happened, you've got to run with what happened. You have to run with Brock Lesnar as your champion, as his force to be reckoned with. Now, going into WrestleMania, he's, he needs to be continue to be built up as this monster of a champion when he defends against Daniel Bryan or Roman Reigns or whoever um, that really remains to be seen on who's ready to challenge for that championship against Brock Lesnar next year at WrestleMania. But with that being said, though, you really need to look at the aspect of that Brock Lesnar is a guy that you can legitimately see end the Undertaker streak at WrestleMania. Now, even all these months later, I know there will, there will still be people that do not agree with the notion to have Brock Lesnar end the streak or have anyone end the streak. Like I said before, I was not a fan of the streak ending, but now that it's happened, I am a fan of Brock Lesnar being the one to do it. Because now the more that I think about it, had it been an active performer, yeah, sure, they can always say that they were the ones to end the streak, but there's a much bigger chance of them, you know, fizzling out within only a couple of months or even a couple of weeks had they lost at Extreme Rules or whatever. And I don't have faith in WWE booking whoever that would have been properly, like a Bray Wyatt or a Roman Reigns or whoever. Um, that could have benefited them. Brock Lesnar would only adds to his accolades that he already had, and that he's a guy that you could legitimately see. He brings legitimately to legitimacy to the WWE. He's a guy that you could legitimately see and the Undertaker streak because the guy's such a fucking beast. So, like I said before, I know a lot of people all these months later will still still not agree with the fact that Brock Lesnar was the guy to end the streak. I don't want to say get over it. But, um, you know, all these months later, I personally believe that the ending of the streak of WrestleMania 30 against Brock Le against The Undertaker was the best course of action. Because the way they booked Brock Lesnar since then as a threat to John Cena, as a threat to the WWE World Heavyweight Championship, has worked out for the better. And it will, in the end, whoever beats Brock Lesnar after the beating that he gave John Cena at SummerSlam, whoever is the one to beat Lesnar at WrestleMania um, will get a monster rub from that victory. So with that being said... Like I said time and time again, I know a lot of people are still down on the idea of the streak ending. I hope you give it more time. Time will tell. Like I said, I think even now is too soon to say, even though it's after SummerSlam, even though he's already champion. I mean, it really all depends on how WWE books Brock Lesnar going forward. If he drops the championship, at, if, if he drops the title and out of champions, then yes, it might be considered a waste. But hopefully WWE is not dumb enough to do that. So with that being said, make sure to leave a comment down below. You can tweet me on Twitter at WrestleRant. Find me on Facebook, Graham Jason Matthews. You know, kick up a conversation about The Undertaker's undefeated streak at WrestleMania. Do you think it should have ended? And all these months later, do you think it was the best course of action to have Brock Lesnar be the one? If it had to end, that is. If it had to end, do you think Brock Lesnar was the right guy to do it? And do you think all these months later, it benefited the Beast Incarnate in the long run? So with that being said, thanks for watching, guys. Always appreciate it. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. I'll be back next week with another video blog. I'm Graham Jason Matthews, and I'll catch you guys then.